So I just started playing the Final Fantasy VII Remake, but I think we can all agree about Cloud's OTP. I love this blocky boy. It looks like Thomas the Tank Engine's done messing around. I really want one, but I wasn't a big fan of the sweeper figures that Amazon was selling, so let's make one from scratch. But first, I wanted to ask a few friends who drink more game fuel than me what they thought about the sweeper. And of course, I got a resounding... Who? That's her right over there. They also informed me of all of the superior FF7 enemies. Since I can't craft them all, here's a lament for the enemies that are now but a dream. Let's start crafting. To start, go to the dollar store and spend $5 or less on a bunch of items that look vaguely like the thing you're trying to build. I ended up buying only toys, but there are tons of good crafting items all over the store with good potential. In addition to Robo Puppy, you'll also need Noptimus Prime and two trains. Time to slip everything out of their clothes and then talk about what tools we'll need for this project. We're gonna keep tools pretty simple on this one. To break everything down, you'll need a craft blade, a screwdriver, and a pair of clippers. Optionally, I have a second pair of clippers to christen everything with the cleanest of cuts. To weld the sweeper together, super glue is pretty strong on its own, but to amp up the bond, we're gonna mix in a little baking soda as well. First, let's break everything down. No, mama. I'll do it. Rest in peace. To start the assemblage, I'm gluing together the tops of the two trains. This piece happened to be emblazoned with a nifty M, so we can pretend it stands for Mako, or Midgar, or maybe Shinra, I don't know. I'm gluing it to the front of the sweeper for what will be the top portion of its shield face thing. And to fill in the rest of that face gap, I'm using a portion of this greebly bit from the bottom of one of the trains. Okay, I know I just set the rules, but now it's time to break them. For the sweeper's face grill, I'm going to release these cows over here and take a piece of their fence. After a bit of snip snap and trim tram, it makes a pretty decent face grill, but let me know in the comments down below how much respect you've lost for me as a rule follower. I didn't mention it earlier, but I also got this dollar store beef bot. I'm only using a small piece of the arm, but I'll save the rest of it for a future kit bash. This was the most cylindrical part I had from the toys I picked up, which makes it the closest candidate for the tank that sits on the back of the sweeper. As you can see, I'm sprinkling on a bit of baking soda to my super glue, which will ultimately make a stronger bond and set quicker than glue on its own. If you do the same technique, I'd recommend spooning on the baking soda first, then using liquid super glue and not the gel type that I have. The liquid type will soak in much easier to the baking soda and give a more reliable bond. As you can see, I'm also using a very messy sausage finger pinch technique, so if you can find the tiniest spoon for baby ants, that will work much better for putting the baking soda in the right spot. Flawless technique. If you have your tickets for the gun show, I'll let you watch the next part of the video. Using a few random train bits and various pieces from the transforming tank man, I'm fashioning the two oversized guns on the sides of the sweeper. For the ammunition cartridges, I'm hack and slashing pieces together to create something that's rectangular-ish, making sure to smooth down any messy cut marks with a sanding stick. Since cutting the toys apart has revealed many unsightly hollow areas not meant for the eyes to see, I'm using random pieces of textured plastic to fill everything in and make it look more solid and less embarrassing overall. Though I didn't fill in the entire hollow areas because some of it will be hidden once the guns are attached to the body. For the sweeper's legs, I'm using Robo Puppy's hindquarters and attaching a small tube of plastic that kind of resembled a piston. Just like the guns, I'm filling in a part of the legs with extra trimmed chunks of plastic. My cut marks were pretty messy, so off camera I filled in some of the gaps with modeling paste and sanded it down with the attempt of making the legs look less like a hodgepodge of messy parts glued together. It definitely isn't perfect, but it distracts the eye just enough. And now we're ready to weld it all together with super glue and baking soda and the assembly is complete. Hey, it kinda looks like that insignificant and unremarkable Final Fantasy enemy you fight a few times in FF7. Oh, and one more detail. Let's cover up those tank wheels. A lot of players had to stay on the bench for this one, but they'll get thrown into the bit box for future builds. Now we're outside cause it's time to paint. Before getting to the more detailed painting, I'm priming the model in black and then flying in from the top for a zenithal highlight, which can be used very effectively for adding a proper highlight, but for my purposes, it's just so I can see some contrast in the details when I start painting everything. 
I'll be using the slightly more expensive paints on the left because I'm a coward, but there's no reason why you can't use cheaper craft paints. I'm pretty bad at painting miniatures, so the result honestly would have been the same. For the first coat of paint, I'm aiming for a look that I'm calling sloppy and wet. As a general painting tip, several thin coats will end up looking a lot better than one thick coat, so it's totally fine that it currently looks a little streaky and translucent in places. I used red paint for the main bod, chrome silver for the legs and the soft underbelly, copper for the instapot in the back, and black for Edward machine gun hands. Next, for weathering, go grab anything absorbent and porous, or really any random sponge blob, and dip the tip into a bit of paint. With a paper towel, try to get off most of the paint, and then lightly dab the model in a few select areas to add a paint chipping effect. While I could have kept this model looking factory fresh, I like making weathered models that tell a story. For example, this one's telling a story that it has been murdering people for a very long time. I'm also using a paintbrush with almost all the paint wiped off to lightly dry brush on some additional wear and tear. For the chrome areas, I'm using the same sponge dab technique as before, as well as using a brush with, again, very little paint to dry brush in some scuffs and scratches. For the sweeper's tubey bod, I'm dry brushing on some light brown to age the red just a bit and add a subtle highlight. Bonus points are awarded to this brown because it also makes some fine dirt. If you're feeling a little fancy, use some gold paint to add some luxurious details. You've earned it. Okay, no more fancy. I want this prince to know what it's like to be a popper too, so I'm flicking on some brown town with a toothpick and a brush. Dirty feet and a dirty face. Even after the toothpick dried, I used it to scuff on some additional brown all over these waffle stompers. And for the final layer of grime, I'm bathing my gun son in Citadel Nuln Oil. This stuff isn't exactly cheap, so here are a couple of other basic recipes that I use as well. For both of these, choose either the left or the right base, then experiment with different colors and ratios until you've found the right result. I'm lathering this stuff on thick since the wash will look a little more subtle after drying time. The only thing to watch out for is any place where the nectar is starting to pool in places. You can dab the excess off with a paper towel for a more consistent coat, or you can wait for it to dry just a bit and try to pull some grime streaks down the side of the model for some additional wear and tear. Now that it's fully grimed, we're calling it done. Roll the beauty shots. This was a fun little project, and as always, let me know what other kinds of crafts you'd like to see me make in the future. For the next video, I'll be returning to another video game building, but it's a secret for now, so make sure you firmly press that subscribe button and gently caress the bell so you don't miss it. Until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.